Discover how you can help children to beat anxiety without simply saying, just don't worry about it. So for me, this is a really interesting issue to talk about, uh, mainly because not only uh, do I work as an anxiety specialist and uh, helping people with all sorts of issues, and I'm often approached by parents who say, my children hasn't uh, is anxious about something or other, or can you help my kids with their fear of dogs? But I'm also a father, and I have a seven-year-old at the moment and a four-year-old, uh, and I've had to face some of these issues myself, you know, when my kids turn around and they say, but daddy, I'm, I'm worried about that, or I'm scared. And so I thought I'd put together something and share some thoughts around how we can help our children to become more resilient and overcome anxiety. Uh, and what are the strategies that we can use? By the way, before we get there, just remember to like, share and comment on this video and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so that you're notified of when these videos are coming out. I think there's some problems with even the way we view anxiety in terms of the message we're sending our children, which I think we need to be aware of. So, for example, if someone rings me up out the blue and says, you know, my, my four year old is anxious about dogs. Can you help them? Well, for me, four years old is a little bit young to do some of the, the hypnotherapy and the change work that I use formally in that sense. But also, even if I said yes, would that be a good thing to do? Would that be a sensible move for the children to learn that every time they have any anxiety at all, they're simply taken to a guy who fixes them? What do they actually learn by that? What they end up learning is that they don't have to do anything internally or change the way they see things themselves. They don't develop uh, self-efficacy. What they develop is the mindset that other people are going to fix me. And I don't think that's something that we should be teaching our children. So if as parents, we all immediately react uh, if any of our children are anxious, like, quick, we have to get rid of it and we have to we have to fix them quickly and they mustn't feel anxiety at all. Then in many ways, not only are we telling them that they're not responsible for changing their own state, that they have to be fixed by someone else. But also that way of thinking is likely to make it much worse for the child. Why? Because they sense that there's worry and concern about being anxious, as though being anxious is in and of itself a problem to be fixed. And what if it's not? Anxiety is, whether we like it or not, a normal part and, par uh, part and parcel of everyday life. It's a, a signal to say, hey, let's just stop and assess, is there a threat going on? Now, please don't misunderstand. There are, of course, times at which if someone has a chronic fear, uh, let's say they were bitten by a dog and now they've spent five, six, seven years, they haven't grown out of it. It's an ongoing problem and it's impacting on the quality of their life. Then, yeah, it's OK. You bring them down and we might look at that. But what I'm trying to get across is this idea of the moment someone feels anxious about something, we don't immediately need to go into, woo, 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 quick, we've got to fix them, quick, we've got to fix them. That that's really not a helpful frame, I don't believe. The other common thing that I hear when parents are trying to help their kids is that we just have platitudes and we say things to them like, it'll be all right. So let me give you a good example. If someone was afraid of dogs, a child was afraid of dogs, saying to them, it's OK, he's all right. It'll be OK. Come here, trust me. Just just stroke it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Or don't need to worry about that. The danger here is that the child responds in their mind with, they don't understand me because they have a real feeling of anxiety, a real feeling of fear. And what they think is that that feeling is telling them that there's a real threat out there. And if we say, no, no, there's no threat, it can feel as though they're not being heard. My son, George, uh, I think he was around four or five at the time, and he became very anxious about fire, you know, and we take him up to bed and 
He'd say, all right, good night, George. And then he'd say, don't go. Why? I'm scared. Uh, about what? About fire. What if there's a fire? I don't want there to be a fire. And I found myself saying all these things like, there's no fire. Just don't worry. Just relax. Just calm down. There's nothing to be afraid of. But, but he kept saying, but I'm worried about fire. And again, if you look at the mechanism, I, 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 I was like, I hadn't spotted that I was doing this. He was genuinely afraid of something. And me saying, no, no, there's nothing to be worried about. He was interpreting that as I'm not understanding him. He really feels like there's a threat. So what can we do in those situations? Well, here's what I did with George and the fire alarm. When he said to me, I'm really scared, you know, and I said, well, of what? And he said, fire. Rather than say to him, no, you don't need to worry about that. You're perfectly safe. What I said to him was, OK, well, you know what? Like, it's good to be have some fear or anxiety about fire. Because fire, let's be honest, it is dangerous. We tell kids, don't play with matches. Why not? Because it is dangerous. And I think that's the thing. Often kids find a nub of truth that they're anxious about. And if we say, don't worry about that, it's like, but they know. Of course it's dangerous. So I validated that. And I said, listen, yeah, of course, fire can be dangerous. You're right. So here's what we're going to do, George. Let me show you some of the things that we have in the house so that you know how we can keep ourselves safe. And I went and I showed him the fire alarm. He didn't know about fire alarms and smoke alarms, and we have loads of them in the house. So I went and showed him there's one outside his room, and I went up and I said, right, this is a smoke alarm, and it detects if there's any smoke or a fire, it will go off. And I pressed and held it, held, held it, the button to test it, and it went, woo, woo, woo. And he was like, wow, that's loud. Yeah. And now for the next few nights, Here's what I would do. He would go, I'm afraid of fire. And I'd go, hold on. What's that sound? Can you hear anything? And he'd go, no. And i go, yeah, it's totally silent, isn't it? What do you think that means? And he goes, oh, the fire alarm's not going off. It means we're safe. And obviously we talked about that if the fire alarm did go off, it just means that there's some smoke and we calmly react. And we. But here's where I was going with this teaching him how to navigate his own level of safety was a better strategy than saying don't worry about it because it's obvious to us as adults that there's smoke alarms and that yeah we're not in any inherent danger but often we forget that they don't know how to navigate the world they don't know whether they are safe or not so often anxiety comes about because they're just in hyper alert they have a little bit it's like that that saying a little bit of information is dangerous they have a little bit of information like fires are bad or fires burnt people many years ago, but they don't know how that actually the context is different now. So our job as parents is rather than just say, don't worry about that, it's to say, OK, maybe there is some truth as to why I can see that you're scared. Let me give you the missing pieces of context and let me help you understand that. If we apply this to the field of, you know, uh, as we mentioned earlier, dogs and a fear of dogs. Well, it's easy for a grown up who's this high and a little dog who's tiny comes wandering towards you. But if you're three or four years old and you're only that big yourself. OK, that's a slight exaggeration looking at it, but you know what I mean. And um, and a dog's coming towards you and the dog's bigger than they are. And it's unpredictable. Yeah, you can hear and see why a child might be scared. So instead of saying, well, it's OK. What if we were able to say, well, yeah, like we do have to be careful around some dogs. And that's why what's the mechanism that we can teach them so that they can navigate their own safety? That's why we always ask the owner, is your dog friendly? Can I stroke him? Right. How do we give children the missing context? And that's one of the big pieces that I wanted to share. The other thing that I thought would be really useful, and this is, and forgive me, because I know some of you are going to, uh, this, this may rub some of you up the wrong way. But it's, are you to blame? 
And when I say, are you to blame, I'm talking about parents of children or adults who play a role model in a child's life. Are you to blame? One of the ways in which children learn how to navigate the world in terms of what's safe and what's dangerous is they watch us, they model us. So if we're afraid of dogs and the child watches us have that tentative response, then likely they're going to copy that. They're going to mirror that. Think about it this way. If uh, they see a spider run out across the kitchen floor and they see then mum look at it and scream and get on a chair, here's the logic that the young brain does. It goes, hold on a second. Spider's very small. Mum's very big. Mum's screaming and is on the chair. Therefore, hmm. That thing that's small must be deadly, must really pose a threat. So, crikey, I better be terrified too. Uh, a mum and a daughter came to see me. Uh, the, da the daughter, she was only about seven, uh, had a fear of dogs and um, they were in the office uh, with me. The mother was sitting next to her because that's how I do it if there are, there are kids that are young, always have the parents there. And what ended up occurring was we did some work with the little girl. And I said, oh, so if there was now a big dog in front of you, right, how would you feel? She said, oh, yeah, I'd feel all right. I'd feel all right. And I thought, oh, yeah, we're getting somewhere now. I said, just put your hand out and imagine stroking that big dog. And this is an imaginary dog. And she leans forward. She starts petting the imaginary dog. And then I said, and mum, do you want to lean forward? And Mum, pet, pet, the, pet the dog as well, the imaginary dog. And the mum went, started freaking out. But of course, that's the moment where you have to say uh, uh, to parents, and here's the message, sort your own shit out first. That, that really is the bottom line. So it's OK telling kids don't worry. But if deep down we've still got some work to do about this, go do that as well. So for me, these are some of the key points to bear in mind. Make sure that when we find out what's bothering them, that we don't just poo-poo it away, that we actually validate how they're feeling and then think about how do we give them a better context so that they can self-navigate their own safety. And obviously, make sure that we're not afraid of the very thing too. And if you are, sort your shit out. As always, for more psychological hacks, for more anxiety-beating tips, make sure you hit the bell so that you get notified, subscribe, and also like, share, and comment. I really want to hear how you're getting on with these ideas. And if any of your children have a particular anxiety and you're thinking, well, how do I apply this to that? Share, let me know. And maybe we can put some more content out there along these lines to directly help and cover some of these questions. All the best.